Hey everybody, this is Justin. I just want to let you know this particular show with our favorite man of the hour, Dr. John Bergman, is going to be brought to you by a couple different websites. And I want to tell you about these because they're very important and really great deals for you guys and uh, websites we have been taking advantage of lately. And I want to uh, pass it on to you. The first one is called Thrive Market. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with this website, but there's um, some great videos on YouTube and it's really, really cool. Um, it's kind of like a Costco membership website. Uh, you pay like a yearly fee and it's like a discount uh, store. But what's really cool is that uh, you pay a yearly fee, but it's, it's like Costco where everything is super, super discounted. So as a result of the yearly fee, uh, it's really cheap too to sign up and um, you get 25 to 50% off. And um, if you go through our link at the time of this recording, there'll be a little pop-up box and you can get an additional 15% off. And they offer like 2,500 of the highest quality foods, supplements, home personal care, beauty products uh, at really, really discounted pricing with free shipping on, on orders over 49 bucks. And you can shop by brand, uh, gluten-free, mom's, paleo, raw, uh, staple diets, v, uh, vegan, and they have all kinds of really cool food too, like baking and condiments and sauces. Under the Bath and Beauty, they have hair care, um, shaving and hair removal, aromatherapy, essential oils, body care, makeup, men's grooming, feminine care. Um, and then they have a whole line of health, natural remedies, bone and joint. I'm telling you, this stuff, the Thrive Market is awesome. And um, I highly recommend it to you. If you're interested in it, you can go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash Thrive Market. Or if you can't remember all that, and I know that's hard to remember sometimes if you're out doing some exercising or driving around, just remember extremehealthradio.com slash 416, and that will redirect you to this show page, and there'll be a link to Thrive Market on there as well. So we appreciate you guys uh, checking them out. And also, during the show, we talked with Dr. Bergman about lowering our exposure to toxins, heavy metals, electromagnetic fields, and one of the best ways you can do that is swapping out your um, cookware with non-toxic organic cookware. And Extrema is awesome because we, we've been using them for quite some time now and we're slowly but surely migrating all of our cookware over to Extrema because if you're familiar with uh, the cookware, the high temperatures and the heavy metals that leach into your food, you want to you don't want to be feeding that food to your family. So Extrema is um, all ceramic. It's made of 100% natural ingredients, clay and water. It's fired in natural gas kilns and there's no heavy metals, no toxins and no chemicals and no poisons. Um, it's awesome stuff and it's non-stick, which is really great. There's no synthetic chemical, um, no synthetic chemicals in this stuff. And I'm telling you guys, check this out. Extrema cookware. You owe it to yourself, to your family to get this stuff. Um, go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash extrema, E-X-T-R-E-M-A. Or if you can't remember that, just go to extremehealthradio.com slash 416 and you can check out the links there. That's probably the easiest thing to remember, episode 416. So thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Thanks for sharing the show with your friends. We really appreciate it. Let us know if we can ever help and we'll catch you guys on the next episode. All right, we are live with Dr. John Bergman. Let's see, is people in the chat room, could you make sure to let us know if you guys could hear us? Uh, this is going to be extremehealthradio.com forward slash 416. I think, Got right? it. Yep. 416. Dr. John Bergman is back in the studio. We're very excited. We're going to be talking about thyroid gland, adrenal health, and the two are inter, um, interconnected. Very much yes, so, aren't they? Exactly. Very much interconnected. So we'll be talking about that. We'll be taking listener questions. You want to do some listener questions more towards the end of the show? Sounds great. That'd be awesome. Rapid fire style. Rapid fire <laughs> style. So if you guys want to grab the show notes to this particular episode, you can do so at extremehealthradio.com forward slash 416. And we'll make sure to put uh, links to everything that we talk about during uh, the show onto that page, extremehealthradio.com forward slash 416 and uh thank you so much dr b for coming on buddy i'm so honored to be here this this is like absolutely essential to get this info out i'm so i'm so glad so you uh made the made the trip all the way from huntington beach again today yeah it was a nice drive and we were you know when you go about 80 90 it's a, it's a really short drive. <laughs> it's really really yeah, quick yeah, yeah, yeah. along the coast right it's an, it, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> 80, 90 <laughs> along the coast. That is awesome. Oh, so um, things have been heating up for you guys down there and uh, or up there in Huntington Beach. You guys are um, doing a lot of great work, seeing a lot of people, and uh, more lives are being changed, which is always a good thing. Mm-hmm. It it's uh, well, we've got pretty unique setup where people come from all around the world, and we'll see them multiple times a day to to get. Um, I mean, literally restore their natural state, which is health. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing a lot now is people are coming in with with a misdiagnosis of hypothyroid or hyperthyroid or Hashimoto's or adrenal fatigue. We just had a patient yesterday. She's taken two steroids for adrenal fatigue. Hmm. And it's like... For adrenal fatigue. I know, I know. Doctors are, they obviously are doing high dose narcotics to come up with this stuff. Because mm. there's no way that that, that actually exists. Right. But all of that stuff is masking a uh, uh, secondary inflammatory response. I mean, there's something that's breaking down tissue, and that's what inflammation is. Mm-hmm. And so anything that breaks down tissue anywhere, is going to cause an inflammatory response because breaking down means that your body needs to rebuild it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like like if you get cut or scratched, you're breaking that tissue instantly. There's an inflammatory response. So if people eat food that's toxic, okay, or they eat glyphosates, you know, the Roundup Ready stuff. Gosh, I just posted something on on our Facebook site about this. It's 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 incredible what's going on with this whole gly- glyphosate. Yeah, issue. Yeah. It's incredible. Well, it's in the groundwater now. It's in all the food. It's in all mm-hmm. all the non organic grain products, mm-hmm. and it's an antibiotic and a mineral chelator. So, so you got like the best of both bad worlds. Yeah, you know, if you were going to engineer something to be toxic to the human body, this would be ideal because it let's let's say you're taking a bunch of healthy vitamins. Yeah, uh-huh. you cannot utilize those vitamins if you're mineral deficient. And so you get something in there that chelates the minerals out. Okay, so that means that the vitamins you're taking aren't gonna be utilized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you get something that's an antibiotic and you're talking between 60 and 80% of your immune system is based on your gut health. So here you're wiping out every defense that you got, hmm. but your body's so smart that it's going to try and rebuild and repair that tissue. Even with all this damage and... Even with all that damage. Yeah. And, and and this is the thing where, where both the adrenals and the thyroid work together. And and they it, it's not like both can be up or both can be down. There always has to be one up or one down. So we had a guest a while back on the show talking about this same issue. Um, and she was talking about the, to first start, you should start with the adrenal glands or... You mean as far as getting back to that um, balance and health? Yeah, as far as getting back to that balance, um, and then the and then the thyroid second, or what's your understanding of, of the of the order in which to is there work an on order? these? There's there's not really an order because it, there's no diseases that are organ specific, and I know I know that's going to say, oh no, I've got thyroid nodules. Yeah, you know, you know, right. oh no, my adrenals are in fatigue. Right. No, there's always they have to work in harmony. There's there's never something that's isolated. Okay, and you can't work on one without affecting the other. It's a okay. full body system, right? It's a full body right. system, exactly, and that's why when when you look at it under normal metabolic response, and you got to build a billion cells a day no matter what. And if you're in a, a prison camp in Auschwitz, okay, starving to death, you still got to build a billion, that much, billion yeah. cells. Yeah. If you're, you know, working out of the gym and eating at Antoine's, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you still got to build still a billion cells. <laughs> okay, so, so, you know, but, but so you got those two things that are going to build the cells. You got the thyroid that's going to build the cells in a healthy metabolic state, and you've got the adrenal glands that'll build those cells in a stress state. Okay, Mm -hmm. because it's and it's all going to be to keep you alive, and so in a stress state, it's going to build those cells in stuff that can keep you alive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're in a chronic adrenal gland dominated state or adrenal dominant state, um, you're not going to be building cells that are that are not important, like uh, skin cells, hair cells, mucous membrane cells. Okay, okay, all of those things are going to be secondary to keeping the heart going, to keeping the liver going. That makes sense. Do you know uh-huh. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so any inflammatory response in the body, instantly the adrenals are activated and the thyroid suppressed. Everything. And it all has to do with sensors that the body is constantly monitoring itself. It's it's kind of kind of like the way the space shuttle works. 
well, it doesn't work anymore, but <laughs> when that program was the, shut down, the, the way rocket ships are supposed to work, okay, right. they're they're actually supposed to, you know, they have secondary and, and systems that are always monitoring. Okay, and so you've got the hypothalamus that's that has sensors through the spine that's always checking what's going on with your body. Okay, okay, should you have should you absorb those nutrients? Should you eliminate those those waste products? You know what's going on. That's the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus. So the okay. hypothalamus gets in there and reads the body what's going on and then it tells if if there's a stress state it activates the <clears throat> thyroid and suppresses or activates the 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 adrenals, adrenals. and suppresses the, the <clears throat> thyroid if it's in a normal metabolic state and remember this is your perception mm -hmm. not what's actually happening mm -hmm. okay okay so you could be thinking that it's stress and your adrenal is going to be activated you can have some tissue damage your adrenal is going to be activated and anytime the adrenals are activated the thyroid is going to be suppressed interesting okay now here's the weird part in the medical world you don't really check the adrenals ever yeah why is that well because you have to check like saliva you got to check um uh, d different th there's not a real accurate test and in fact in blood test it, it 80 percent of it has to be destroyed before you find out there is a problem mm. and the adrenals produce every glucocorticosteroid minocorticosteroid and sex hormone adrenals adrenals mm. so under adrenal fatigue people are going to be diagnosed with low wait i can't say testosterone because are you not allowed well, no, no, no. When, when you look at it, 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 see, guys are afraid of saying erectile dysfunction oh, or oh, right. testosterone because that's impinging their manhood. Yes, right. yes. So let's just <laughs> qualify that as say low T syndrome. Low, low T. T. I've and heard it, that, low T. I know, it's so like ridiculous. Why can't you say that word? I, it, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're you know, making it into a dirty word. It, yeah. it, it really is. Uh, but that's low silly. T. What does that mean? That means you're either taking endocrine disruptors, which is going to be in every packaged food out there, mm -hmm. or you know the glyphosates. That's an endocrine disruptor as well, mm -hmm. and in every plastic water <laughs> bottle is going to going to do that as well. But when you're when you're taking that, okay, it's going to cause damage to your system. Okay, or it could be adrenal fatigue, because if you're if you're they produce every glucocorticosteroid, minocorticosteroid, and sex hormone. Easy for you to say. We're taking, <laughs> we're talking, so that means every estrogen, every progesterone, progesterone protects you from cancer. Um, testosterone, okay, okay, everybody, males and females need all of those. So, and interferon, that's produced by the kidneys and adrenal glands. Okay. So any fibroid formation, Adrenal fatigue. I hear that um, over in this area. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, Kate's working on that right now. Well, I have all this that you're taught. I mean, I'm understanding how this cycle goes because it's not yeah. just a fibroid. It's not just your adrenal. I mean, when you're saying this, I'm like, yeah, you're reading my life. And and here's crazy world. <clears throat> when you get in there, they're not testing the adrenals. Mm. They go in and test the thyroid because you go in. What, what are you going to go to the doctor for? You're going to go in and say, I have no energy, you know. <laughs> I'm 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 putting on weight. I'm feeling exhausted. Um, well, let's check your thyroid. Right. And so the only thing that they're going to test is the pituitary spits out a, a thing called TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone. Right. And the adrenals produce um, a, basically they produce a bunch of stuff, but they're only going to look for T3 and T4 in mm -hmm. the testing. In in the testing. Okay. And T stands for thyroid, three stands for three molecules of iodine. Okay. Four, T4 stands for thyroid with four molecules of iodine. iodine. Oh. Okay. And and so you might think, well, since the thyroids use an iodine to build stuff, mm -hmm. if anyone has an iodine deficient diet, would that, you know, kind of show up? Right. So how they diagnose hyper and hypothyroid is really, uh, how do you say stupid and low level, but without uh, being insulted? <laughs> I think uh, you just said it. <laughs> okay, okay. The caveat was. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. It, it's that whole politically correctness. I'm not. I don't, I'm not having. But so so you look at if the TSH is higher, the pituitary screaming to get the thyroid working. Uh huh. And the thyroid and the T3 and T4 levels are low. They say you have a hypothyroid. It's not working good. Okay. The brain's trying to tell the thyroid. So that's a slow metabolic or slow thyroid. According right? to the so ignorant their, blood test. Right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and so they'll give you a drug. Typically, um, uh, it's called thyroxin, uh -huh. which is mainly T4. 
Okay. Now, now here's the weird part. What tells that pituitary to work? The hypothalamus. Hmm. Okay. So, and the and the the pituitary is going to tell the thyroid to work harder or suppress the thyroid if the adrenals are up. So the pituitary reacts to stimulus sent up by the the body through the hypothalamus. Okay. Okay, so 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 now I, I know this is going to sound a little weird, but you got these sensors in the body that go up the spine, hit the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus sends a signal to, to the pituitary, and the pituitary can either suppress or raise thyroid function, or suppress or raise adrenal function. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So so it all goes on those. So now let's say someone's misdiagnosed with uh, low functioning thyroid. Well, they're given the thyroxin. Well, the thyroxin floats around in the system, and the body sensors sense it. Hmm. Okay. So it says, hey, the thyroid's working fine. We don't need to stimulate the natural T3 and T3 production. Okay. So the thyroxin is hmm. actually going to lead to adrenal fatigue <laughs> because it's going to say that the thyroid's working okay, so the adrenal glands need to start kicking up a notch. So the adrenal glands, let me see if I get this right. The adrenal glands, since the thyroid is working correctly, the adrenal glands then, what do they do because of that? They, well, they, they're they going to start to um, not respond correctly. And it's going to seem like the adrenals are in a fatigue state. Okay. And they back off a little? Yeah, they back <clears throat> off a little. So there's going to be an alteration in response. And which is tough because when you know that they produce the estrogen, testosterone, um, a, a progesterone, okay, that protects you from cancers, right? Mm -hmm. It's going to totally screw up everything, and then the T4 doesn't really change your metabolic rate. It, so, what it, is the T4 it, doing then, according to the regular? Um, they're thinking that it that it increases your metabolism, and okay. it does make make you feel a little bit better. Uh huh. But now let's let's look at but just for short term, right? Um, yeah, and then it's not it's not in secreted when it's needed, okay. and it's not completely um, appropriate for what the normal functions are. Okay. So now let's say that you live in an environment that has um, low iodine. Let's say you live in an environment that maybe has chlorine floating around like in the water mm -hmm. or fluoride floating around in the in the water you mean anywhere in america <laughs> i was gonna say where do you not <laughs> oh. yeah okay now, now let's let's say you're okay america's a good choice oh, america. yeah, we'll <laughs> let's, go let's say you're not using iodine in the in the bread making that you're using bromine right okay right. well bromine fluoride and chlorine are called halides and those things like remember the periodic Table of elements, you know, like we had to memorize in high school. Oh, I hated those. You'll well, be happy I have my little. Oh, back. cool. Little <laughs> <laughs> well, those those structures, the bromine, fluoride, and and uh, chlorine, they're similar in iodine. So let's say you're iodine deficient. So your body, you, you know, your thyroid has to make its T3 and T4. Well, it's looking around for a halide that's similar to iodine because mm -hmm. you're iodine deficient. Okay. And so it's going to try and make it, but it's going to, again, appear that it's hypothyroid. I see. So so you got inflammation that's going to give you an appearance of a, a low-functioning thyroid. You've got um, deficiency of and iodine. toxicity. Yeah, the toxicity from the chlorine flow. So, so let's go over this again. Those are um, toxicity. Toxicity. And deficiency. Deficiency. Yeah. Is, there, is there anyone who isn't deficient in iodine? Um, iodine? I mean, well, if you're supplementing, you're not. Uh huh. Yeah, that's the only. <laughs> How messed up is that? That you need to have a supplement to be okay. Well, well on know, living right? on this planet now, you do have to have supplements in order to survive. Hmm. And, yeah, and a lot of people think no, but I, I don't, I don't agree with that. It's well, a whole different world. Well, yeah. it's a whole different world. I mean, if in the in the old days because you need minerals that are ionized. And what, mm -hmm. what that means is you need a nutrient-rich soil that, that the plant goes in there and draws up the copper, iron, zinc, selenium, magnesium, everything from the soil. Right. right. And then it converts it to where you can metabolize it. <clears throat> and so in, in the old days, we would plant in river valleys. Mm -hmm. And so every winter, you know, every few years, the valleys would flood, drawing in that nutrient-rich, decayed plant matter from the mountains, uh -huh. fill up the river valleys. So you get all those rich minerals rich down minerals. there. And oh my so, gosh. Yeah. So you got all that. Yeah, now you get so, Roundup. Yeah, so now you get Roundup. You know, the, <laughs> but the Punjab region in India has been mm. farming for, you know, 
10,000 years. Let's go to, you know, Egypt, cool river valley. Let's go to the Mississippi yeah. river valley. However, we can't do that anymore because we stopped it with the dams and there's no floods. Well, I've heard, I read something recently where uh, people were talking about um, the farmers went to the government, U.S. government in the 1930s complaining about low mineral counts. Mm. Yep. And nothing was ever done. Well, well in, in, in that, did you, Which is when you read the document, they say with low minerals, we're going to see a rise in chronic diseases. Mm. You what know, year was that in, that document? I think Do you know? 32 or 36. Yeah, like it was that. in the mid Is this before they even started stripping the bread of all its. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So even then. When did they start doing that, I wonder? That's got to be Stripping the, the bread of the bromide uh, and putting bromide. I, stripping. I think it was in the 60s, 70s. Was it? Yeah. yeah and hmm. Maybe 80s around was there. Was Wonder Bread and all this white bread coming Came out. Came on the market. It yeah. just wasn't the way bread ever was. But. Well, it adds to the shelf life. So, right, right. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Good for business. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have a question. <clears throat> I know we decided that the blood probably isn't very reliable testing for adrenals and all that kind of stuff. I've done so many of those saliva tests where you collect it for a 24 hour mm -hmm. period to keep them in the freezer, you send them in. <clears throat> Is there anything to do with the reliability of those? Are they better than blood? Are you how, how, like if people came to you, could you just look at them and be like, you have this going on or is there, can you assume everybody has it going on or? Well, well this is this is the interesting part. You can't really look at, and this is gonna to be totally different than nature pass, homeopaths, you know, most, most every health care person out there, is your body is responding correctly given the environmental stimulus. So to look for a test mm -hmm. for the thyroid or adrenals or any organ, um, th that's, that's not accurate because it's, your body is responding correctly Hmm. given the environmental stimulus. And, and there's so many interdependent organ that systems. Sense. That does make sense. And, and when you look at, let, let's say you have uh, unhealthy bacteria in the gut. Mm -hmm. Okay, that bacteria is gonna help you um, process and, and absorb and produce B vitamins. So let's say someone's B vitamin deficient. Mm -hmm. You need intrinsic factors secreted by the stomach in order to uh, utilize B, B12. So and, and it's produced in the gut. Right. So uh, how many people out there have a stress state, which is means that the the fight or flight nervous system is kicking in there. <laughs> that means nerve systems to the gut are shut down. There's mm -hmm. going to be slow gastric motility and they're going to have unhealthy mm -hmm. bacteria and present as B vitamin deficient when it's really a, a sympathetic dominant or a fight or flight state going on that slows down the gut, that slows down the bee. And this, so it's this whole cascading, just it, interconnected it, web of exactly. things that are going on, right? And then, then go on, like if you have that situation going on and, and to tie it back into the thyroid and adrenals, mm. you're, gonna, you're gonna be in a sympathetic dominant state, which means the adrenals are gonna be up because they're gonna be producing adrenaline and noradrenaline and epinephrine and cortisol and everything, and that's gonna suppress the, the thyroid. See what I mean? So it's, yeah. there's so many, it's, there's not an <clears throat> organ specific disease. So what happens when people are um, on traditional medication? What's the long-term effect? What, what do they see in their body that happens over time if they're on traditional thyroid medication? Mm, uh, oh, good question. Yeah, 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 chronic inflammatory responses. Oh, really? Just throughout everywhere. Throughout in the body. everywhere. And for sure, it's gonna be adrenal fatigue. They're gonna be building unhealthy cells. And I mean, I've seen people, because what they'll do if there appears to be a hyper or a, an overactive thyroid, mm -hmm. which is it, like not only phenomenally rare, but a blood test is a snapshot in time. Mm -hmm. This this is why it, it, there's a condition called Hashimoto's. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this one involves the gut and the thyroid. Okay, and and in a leaky gut. <clears throat> Um, your body's going to release, you know, because the, the intestinal tract is supposed to be enclosed. And that's where a lot of digestion takes place. If you have holes in that gut, again, glyphosates and right. vaccines and antibiotics. And so this is just going down to the fast food joint and getting a burger. Yeah. You're yeah. getting the antibiotics. Yeah. You know, oh, I don't take any antibiotics, but you know, we just came from Carl's Jr. Yeah. Right, you know, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it. It doesn't Over work the that different way. counter <laughs> antibiotics. <Right. laughs> and, 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 and so that, that's oh, gonna blow man. holes in the, in the intestinal <clears> tract. <throat> so you get these undigested proteins inside of the bloodstream. 
Okay. And the body recognizes foreign proteins as a pathogen. Right. right. So it builds these little warriors called the antibodies to kill those foreign proteins, the undigested okay. ones. Now, gluten and casins, you know, from the dairy and, and bread, those look really similar to to the thyroid. Okay, it, it mimics it. It's it, it's going to have a similar affinity to attack it. So if you have a leaky gut, you're taking gluten and casein, um, or you know dairy free, gluten free diets. How those are supposed to be good for the thyroid? Right. That's because you're getting less proteins into the <clears throat> bloodstream or less undigested proteins. You're getting. Let me think about this. So you're getting less undigested proteins into the bloodstream. Yeah, because mm -hmm. any protein in the bloodstream is going to trigger an immune response. Okay, that makes sense. Any protein, because because the body is so vigilant that if you see and, and, and you got to keep on saying undigested proteins. Right. And so this means every vaccine which mm. has proteins in it right, is right. going to trigger an immune uh, an immune response. Every leaky gut is going to trigger an immune response. So anytime someone with leaky gut person eats, they're going to be having these responses. Exactly. So inflammatory responses and all that. Oh, what, what did you say? Inflammatory response? Uh, inflammatory response. Oh, so that <laughs> means that the leaky gut is actually an inflammatory response. Inflammation is going to cause the body to kick up cortisol production, which is the greatest anti-inflammatory known to man. Uh -huh. Okay. And so, but anytime the adrenals up, what's, what's suppressed? The thyroid. Mm -hmm. Thyroid. So, so you're looking at everything. Is is the the thyroid and the adrenals are are it's like the red light on the dashboard. Mm. Okay. Anybody taking thyroxin is putting the the uh, the black tape over the red light. Okay. It, I get and, it. So they're and, masking that. Oh, and, and I mean, in the barbaric world, they'll take radioactive iodine to kill the thyroid if they think it's working too hard. They'll remove the thyroid if it's if it's they see nodules on it, you know. And and you're talking precancerous lesion, which how, is, how is, could well, they? Okay. Yeah, let's talk about that because I have two friends now that don't have thyroids. They've yeah. completely removed how them. They, how how do they survive? How is that possible? Um, you can survive. Okay, the, and this is the weird part. Generally, there's certain aspects of the thyroid that are still there. Okay. They rarely remove the entire thing. They, they okay. remove most of it. Okay. And the body is so efficient that um, uh, people can survive with it. They may need to take like the thyroxin, but you know, it's damaged. It's like if someone has had their gallbladder removed. Right, you can live without it, but it's not, it, your your other systems are gonna Your other systems are gonna make be up taxed. for it. There's mm -hmm. always gonna be an inflammatory response in the duodenum where the, the gallbladder- Liver and gallbladder bile, connect. Yeah, where the, where the bile's draining all the time. You're gonna be hormone deficient mm -hmm. if you have had the gallbladder removed. And it's the same thing with the thyroid. The problem is most thyroids are removed um, not correctly mm. and thyroid cancers used to be ridiculously rare but now since they're doing ultrasounds and tests and everything else and biopsies they're the rate of thyroid cancers supposed cancers have right. increased right you know 150 50, you know percent um per year hmm. and you're seeing more and more and more thyroid just cancers. because they're testing for it and they're finding things oh, yeah they're finding in some cases uh, some of the studies i've read it's a 15 fold increase and oh my gosh. It, because they're misdiagnosing it because remember the only thing they're looking at for a thyroid function is the pituitary spitting out the thyroid stimulating hormone and the t3 and t4 and in think of if there's a leaky gut those antibodies are going to make the thyroid appear low. Mm -hmm. Right. And false reading. And also, too, if those antibodies, because antibody production isn't up or it, it isn't consistent. Like, have you ever hit your thumb with a hammer? Unfortunately. Unfortunately, many times. We all have. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we're not alone. Look at all this humanness we share. And well, 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 you'll, you'll, you'll you'll know it, it, it hurts hurts like crazy, right? Oh, it hurts. And then it it kind of gets a little bit less and then all of a sudden it hurts more again and then gets a little less right that's because when you hit it your adrenal glands start to produce um this pain reliever that's 40 times more power than heroin okay. i mean this this sucker is amazing and and that production can't remain at the same level, so it goes down occasionally. Okay, then so, it'll spike so up when you start exactly. to exactly. So hormones, everything like that, is not consistent. It goes is going to go up and down. Okay, antibody production is the same way. Mm. So you got that leaky gut. 
okay? You got those funky proteins in, in an area they shouldn't be. The immune system responds with antibodies. So your antibody production is going to go up and down. Okay. So the attack on the thyroid is going to go up and down. Okay, depending on the presence of those foreign proteins. Okay. Yeah. And it's going to be dependent on if you're eating them, if they're getting through the holes in the intestinal tract. There's a lot of things. Yeah. Because yeah. you could, someone with, with leaky gut could theoretically eat a meal that's completely healthy for them that doesn't puncture their their mm -hmm. intestinal lining and they, they mm -hmm. won't get a response. They right? won't get the response, exactly. Right. Yeah. And this is why when I talk to people who are in the medical world or in and people who have just come through with that medical mindset, I say, is Hashimoto's hyper or hypothyroid? And Hashimoto's has to do with the leaky gut negatively affecting the thyroid. Okay. And you know what the correct answer is? Both. Mm. It's both. Okay. Isn't that weird? Wow. And so when you start to look at it, and again, this is like, it's it's almost impossible to look at an organ-specific disease. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's got to be, um, it. everything is systemic. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is where the medical world is totally messing up. Mm -hmm. They're not looking at the, every aspect of the body's health. Well, in their defense, if they did that, they'd have to spend, I mean, an hour with each patient or two hours with a patient to really dial in their, their yeah their lifestyle and how they move and function and all these things. I mean, it's just not really le legitimate, legitimately feasible financially. Mm. So, I mean, I think with so spending, many sick people, yeah. if you had a lot less sick people, they might be able to spend the proper I mean, time with people who are imagine. more challenged. <laughs> you guys are talking about change of the world. Sorry, sorry, yeah. I know we're trying. Yeah. Hey, it's here's like, a good question in the chat. Can yeah. I ask? This is great. Um, so Ali's in the chat room. Uh, for the first time, welcome, and says, I've started, um, I'm sorry, perfect episode, recently diagnosed with hypothyroid and taking nature th throid? Nature mm -hmm. throid? Nature I have a high reverse T3 and sub, I'm going to blow this word, suboptimal, sub, sub, suboptimal, suboptimal. Is that what it is? <laughs> I'm not awake. T3 and, T, um, and total T3. I had a really stressful 2015 and blood work showed inflammation, pre-diabetic, low B12. What should I be doing to heal adrenals and correct thyroid? Oh my gosh, is that episode. beautiful? I know. We're, we're, Perfect one to be and, live. And, and, and think of this too, because that's, that's one of the things where homeopaths, naturopaths, and MDs all get it wrong. Uh, they're only they're looking at the thyroid and giving something specific for the thyroid. Okay. So when you look at her lifestyle, high stress, that kicks in <clears throat> the, the fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And there's only two, just like the, the thyroid and adrenals, there's, it's, it's big brother and sister, the sympathetic and parasympathetic. Okay. The parasympathetic nervous system is called rest, digest, and repair. Mm -hmm. rest, the digest, sympathetic repair. is called fight or flight. Okay. So you got to have one of those up and one of them down. Under Could, stress. Sh should they constantly be in flux and changing all the time? The, always. Theoretically, always. that would be optimal. It, it, it has to be that way. Okay. And if people are in a chronic sympathetic <laughs> dominant state, um, their body, uh, well, well, let's just say in a normal sympathetic dominant state. Okay. Um, your body uh, is getting ready for battle. Okay, so this is like now we're hunger um, game style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get Let's my do it. sweetheart up, at, you know, four thirty this morning to go to the gym. <laughs> I'm taking her out of that parasympathetic state where she's, you know, regenerating and regenerating, yeah, and she gets, <laughs> you know, because to, to get to the gym. But what that does is shuts blood supply down to the gut. It elevates heart rate. It increases blood cholesterol level because your your cholesterol is the precursor to every hormone you're mm -hmm. going to make. Right, and you may need some adrenaline. You may need some cortisol because you're going getting into battle. Blood thickens up, and and literally blood supply to the gut does shut down. Wow. Okay. Okay. Under the sympathetic Under dominant. Under the sympathetic dominant okay. state. So now in her B B vitamin deficiency. The B12. And knowing that that is, um, it, it, it indicates either slow gastric motility, low intrinsic factor from the stomach, um, poor bacteria. There's so many different factors. And so many people say, oh, We'll just give you a B12 shot. Mm -hmm. Right. And instead of looking at uh, if she has a sedentary <clears throat> lifestyle, if she's sitting on her butt a lot, the parasympathetic or the rest, digest, and repair is located in the sacrum. 
So people with sedentary lifestyles are going to be suppressing or altering that function of that nervous system. Okay. If they're office workers or the heads forward, that's also going to alter that parasympathetic activity and the the awareness uh, that your body has of its environment. Mm -hmm. So her body is going to respond correctly by straining the adrenal glands. Well, here's what's awesome. It's after that question followed up with, I have started walking slash jogging two to three times a week, changed my diet to high protein and healthy fats for breakfast, making bone broth weekly and eating gluten and dairy free. Okay. So have she's her, helping ha, Have her also do barefoot walking. Barefoot the, the walking. Grounding walking. The grounding walking. Yeah. Grounding, Yeah. Because okay. that has an antioxidant effect. Have her get huge amounts of, of healthy omega-3s, okay, okay. because that's going to help the brain function. But she's got to get her nervous system checked. I mean, without a doubt, because if there's a sympathetic or parasympathetic dominant state, that's going to make the adrenals and the thyroid appear to have altered function. What was that test that you did on me that was the it was I was in that other office of yours and it, it goes up and down the spine. Was that the nervous yeah. system check? Yes. Okay. Oh, God. Is that the so only way to test your nervous system? Um, there's, well, we use four methods. Okay. And those are the, the most accurate I've found. It, it as soon as they come up with another one, I'm going to get it. <laughs> I mean, because I, did, I, I just really, to play with at home uh, on your off time. God, I, I, I really like cool stuff. Yeah, so you need to get um, heart rate variability. That's what it was called. Heart and, rate variability. And this is something that you know when you're in the movies and you see that blip thing mm -hmm. you know, on, the, on the screen that measures your heart and then tells you you're dead. That, it, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they flatline. Yeah. Flat <laughs> Believe me, good lives do have their ups and downs. <laughs> That's true. So it's normal. Okay. Good. Totally normal. <laughs> and that well that's called a qrs interval okay and what it does it measures the width the height and the spacing of that over a five minute time frame and it'll place you on a scale of sympathetic or parasympathetic and also um how how effective and efficient your body is at recognizing the environment okay because i mean if your body misinterprets a signal it, it could mean death okay and so so it it that that's the first one a signal like this i'm just wondering like say somebody gets uh see something and they react really strongly to it and yeah. do people die of like panic and shock well, and things well, like that um you I know you've heard of how stress kills yeah there's actually a clinical mechanism on how that happens it's it's a it's almost a defense mechanism for the body and this is kind of cool because you can see it on x-ray Wow. And so we could tell. You can see this on X-ray. Wow. Oh, yeah, you can. Well, um, like, you know, in the movies how, you know, if somebody has a heart attack, they grab their left arm or yep. left jaw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's because if you irritate the diaphragm on the left side where the heart's sitting, that increases the tone of the left trapezius. And that it has to do with its embryologic origin. Now, if you irritate the diaphragm on the right side where the liver is, that increases the tone on the right trap. And this is why in, you do a thing called differential diagnosis where you're, you get a person with the symptoms and you have to come up with different areas that you need to look into. This is like every doctor school. It's, it's really memorize and regurgitate. Mm -hmm. okay. And so if you say tight right trap and reacts badly to fats, oh man, gallbladder, I got this one. It's E. I was even gonna get that one. <laughs> but, but what, I didn't what, go to doctor school. <laughs> I know, I know, it's, it's, it's pretty easy. <laughs> But, but but that also means think think of the off button. Think if you're being tortured. Okay, you've been in prison camp for you know years, or in torturous relationship, or a job that's not satisfying. Your liver has to process these stress hormones more and more and more. Okay, and so it, it, it you know the adrenaline, the noradrenaline, the cortisol, the the physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. Well, that increases the right trap. Well, dead center of that right trap is the top of the rib cage area, T1 through T4. And so when we see a deviation hmm. of those vertebrae there, and we'll see it massively over, eventually that goes over so far where it fires a sympathetic charge down to the heart, putting the heart in what's called ventricular fibrillation, stopping the heart. Okay. And we'll see 100% of pacemakers have a deviation in that area. Isn't that interesting? And, wow. and, and it's, it's wild too, because wow. you've got a profession that understands that the heart has two regulatory things. It's got a parasympathetic nervous system that regulates the natural function of the heart. It's got the sympathetic nervous system that regulates it a little bit faster under stress. Okay. And, and we know the sympathetic nerve supply to the heart is the top of the rib cage. We know the parasympathetic nerve supply to the heart is the base of the brain. You know, we know okay. this. 
You know, I mean, I'd, I'd cut open a whole bunch of people, mm -hmm. you know, when I was teaching dissection and you could see these structures. Mm. Wow. But they don't check the natural nerve supply to the heart before they put in a pacemaker. Mm. Wow. It's it's That's like bizarre. mind boggling. So so on an x-ray, if we see a, a deviation in that area, man, do you have heart palpitations? We do, just had a friend come from back east and she's a physician's assistant. And you know, I, you know, I didn't do the full physical exam on her. She just wanted to feel this chiropractic thing. Right, right. And I said, well, let me get a couple of X-rays. And I look at her X-rays, and I said, my God, do you have heart palpitations and indigestion? And and she went, how did you know? Huh. And it was like, <laughs> well, I can read a map. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's right there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So so okay. but, so those type of n nervous system reactions. The nervous system is responding correctly even in heart palpitations, given the environmental stimulus. Mm -hmm. So much stress is causing the off button or the shutdown of the systems mm -hmm. to be triggered. So dealing with the thyroid, dealing with the adrenals, dealing with the, the, the bowel issues, dealing with the B12 deficiency is not effective because you're dealing downstream, you're dealing with the end result of some type of physical, chemical, or emotional stress. So those four tests that you were talking about, oh, to check yeah. that, oh, just to, to, will that help people get a better gauge on what they're dealing with versus like these exactly. little pockets of things they think it, they're? Yeah, because you gotta start with the nervous system. Right. That's why we'll take a you know digital x-ray, you know, or could be stress x-rays, the heart rate variability, which measures the QRS interval and tells you sympathetic, parasympathetic, will measure the muscle activity with what's called a surface electromyography, because you don't have conscious control of the muscles that run down either side of the spine. They'll increase in tone under certain stressors. And then we'll do what's called a rolling thermal scan where we we'll check temperature differential on either side of the spine. Hmm. And that, it, it should be, Symmetry. It should should be symmetrical. So you're testing the actual temperature of the the, the muscles? actual temperature next to well, the spine. Well, not the muscles, but we're testing the temperature on either side of the spine in a segmental level. Wow. And and, and think of this. This is kind of cool because because if you have something hotter that's on one side than the other, and we're measuring right next to the spine, we're talking half inch away. Okay. That means that those blood vessels are dilated. And the one thing that dilates those blood vessels is the sympathetic. And those are also nerves that supply the organ systems. So organ systems typically under a sympathetic control hmm. means that they're not functioning correctly. You know, they're being shut down. Right. So that, that person with B vitamin deficiency, mm -hmm. she's gonna have major slow gastric motility. There's gonna be a lot of um, some type of sympathetic stressor, and then that's gonna lead to adrenal um, dominant state. That's gonna lead to a, a appearing high, low functioning thyroid. I mean, right. Everyone. So and how do cascades. people become um, uh, B vitamin deficient? The history of heat therapy dates back over 2,400 years, and it was Hippocrates who said, give me the power to produce fever and I will cure all disease. This FDA approved medical device called the Biomat is a mat that you can lay on, read on, sleep on, do yoga on, sit on, and it can be used on office chairs, massage tables, and the like to help the body heal itself. It's inlaid with 30 pounds of healing crystals using amethyst, and a rare black tourmaline producing negative ions in a healing electrical field. These healing crystals help to restore cellular health by replacing electrons to the atoms as well as penetrating deep into the body by four to six inches. What can the Biomat do for you? It'll improve your skin, burns as many calories as if you went jogging for 30 minutes, it improves the immune system by up to 40% or more, reduces stress and fatigue, removes toxins, lowers cholesterol, relieves pain, revitalizes cellular metabolism. It improves cell channels to deliver nutrients and oxygen to every one of your cells. It activates over 3,000 enzymes. And even a Harvard medical study showed cancer cells die at over 42 degrees Celsius. It reduces stress hormones by up to 78%. It allows your body to produce heat shock proteins, which increases endorphins, NK cells, T cells, and lymphocytes. It's very, very low EMF, and it's got a 17-layer technology. Dr. Mark Circus is the director of the International Medical Veritas Association, 
Uh, explain to us more about these biomats. These biomats are these far infrared mattresses. You lay on them, or you sleep on them, or both. You do you know, very heavy treatments during the day, and at night you, you know, sleep at you know, just a nice, comfortable temperature. These biomats are like these love machines, comfort machines, and healing machines. Because what they do is they just radiate out light, far infrared light, and you can radiate yourself all night long while you're sleeping when you're not doing anything else. And what happens is this light penetrates the body and turns to heat. And the first thing that happens when you bring your core body temperature up one degree is your immune system strength increases by 40, 50%. They feel when you lay down on them, you know, you guys know you have one. So it's like the feeling is so good. It's like being in the cuddling with a lover, your wife or husband. It's just warmth and comfort. How are you using biomats for patients in your clinics? You know, the, the cancer treatment using heat is very aggressive, meaning during the day, you sandwich yourself in between two of them, turn it on to high heat, and bake the cancer. The cancer will die before you will. No, this is, you know, That's you can awesome. go to England and spend the $20,000 and use microwave a cancer out of existence. Uh, these biomats basically do the same thing. You know, radiation therapy for cancer is really a solid idea. Unfortunately, oncologists use the wrong radiation. They use radiation that kills you. This biomat uses radiation that can save your life and make your life more comfortable, keep you warm in the cold, and help take care of your kids and all, you know, the list doesn't end. Yeah, because isn't there some sort of temperature at which cancer cells will right. start dying? Right, and it's below the temperature that human cells will die. So you really like this biomat far infrared technology, don't you? But it's, it's really, it strengthened me. Well, now the kids are addicted to it. You know, they fight on who's going to sleep on it at night. And it changed, not only changed my life, but it changed my medical practice and my books. This is a great machine for anybody who lives in the cold during the winter. Instead of heating a big house, you just heat yourself. What, <laughs> bottom line, it brings good feelings. Just lay on this biomat and it gives the strength back. I can attest to that indeed. Kate and I love ours and we think you will too. Learn more about these amazing biomats at extremehealthradio.com forward slash biomat. Or you could check them out in our store as well. Again, that's extremehealthradio.com forward slash biomat. Did you know that conventional dog food contains antibiotics, herbicides, pesticides, ground up carcasses from roadkill subjected to high heat processing, artificial colors, chemical preservatives, way too many carbohydrates, genetically modified corn syrups, indigestible grains, and a lack of moisture content in the dry kibble? Obviously, this can lead to health conditions like diabetes, itchy skin, teeth and gum problems, liver damage, obesity, behavioral issues, pancreatic problems, and even cancer. That's why we recommend the Barf Diet, which is the biologically appropriate raw food diet from Barf World. Their unprocessed raw meats contain bone, organ meats, vitamins, and minerals that are loaded with enzymes. Barf World founder Robert Mueller explains more. Sure, I don't have to convince you on the damage that's caused by high heat to food. So as a result, we see many skin disorders, a lot of arthritis, obesity, heart disease, cancers. I mean, it's just rampant. The vet clinics are just full of these conditions. And basically a large percentage of the commercial pet food that's made is made up of the human industry leftover. And the pet food industry makes use of this waste product. And in addition to that, we are subjected to the products coming out of the rendering plants. Garbage in, garbage out. If you feed garbage to your dog, you're going to end up with garbage out. You know, if you put the right gas in, your engine runs smoother and lasts longer. So if you put the right fuel in the tank, you're going to get the right output. Garbage in, garbage out. We've seen an immense difference with our dog Maggie being on this diet. Give your dog the gift of health today by going to extremehealthradio.com forward slash barf or go to our store. That's extremehealthradio.com slash barf to learn even more. Hmm. Are there foods that are depleting uh, yeah. those vitamins? Vegans are are known for being B vitamin deficient. Vegans. Vegans. Yeah, because those there's there's a lot of B vitamins in animal products. Okay. That's why brewer's yeast is really important okay. and and B B vitamin supplementation. B complex. So you want to get like a whole complex. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I mean B12 is great to 
to ramp up as well, but you also want to get a whole complex. Yeah, and that's okay. that's where like brewer's yeast is, is really a good complex B vitamins. I hear um, watermelon rind and, and melon rinds are really good for, for oh, yeah. B vitamins as well, right? Yep. I mean, yes. assuming they're in the soil, which may or may yeah. not be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah what and, soil? And, and then you don't want this the depleted or the what, what do they call it seedless watermelon oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah sketchy yeah. yeah you want the real ones with seeds yeah we, where we, are they growing how are they even growing those things I, I, it, it, you figure if you're oh. missing the reproductive capability right. of a fruit and that's right. the job of a fruit something's wrong with yeah, that nutrient value ain't there yeah, yeah. We, we were in the Dominican Republic this past weekend I was speaking down there mm -hmm. and we had it was so cool to see big red watermelon with black seeds everywhere. Oh, man. Oh, it was, it was Yeah, you're, su you're supposed to eat the seeds, from what I understand, you know, yeah. of fruit, if you can, if, the, if it's edible, you're supposed to eat the whole thing. It's like a whole food. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Makes yeah. sense, doesn't it? Eat the apple, eat the core. Yeah, well, apple seeds are supposedly really good. Don't they contain the uh, B17 with the cyanide and things for yeah. cancer and all? Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I don't wanna, I don't wanna <laughs> say, they can't do anything to cancer, but they're they're good. They're just a oh, seed. you can't. Okay, yeah, just we've known it for People, thousands of years. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, love but I, love in, I love instead that we get our parents saying, "Don't swallow that. You might grow something in your stomach." Yeah, yeah. remember that? What in the world? Mom was right about everything but that. But yeah. that. Yeah, your face will stay that way if you make it. <laughs> Don't make that face. <laughs> yeah, B17 is a, a good one. It's in uh, apricot kernels and um, apple seeds. And oh, yeah, yeah. We always get the apricot kernels. In yeah. fact, you can get them, and we always do like four or five every day. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah. Apricot yeah they're great. You get them at health food stores. So the people who think that, or people who are deficient in any B vitamins say they think they're doing a great thing and they go get a shot of B vitamin or an injection of a mm -hmm. B they're probably gonna feel better for a little mm -hmm. while, right? But it's yeah. not getting to the root of the not problem. Permanent. But that stuff can help people in it, like it, dire situations. Exactly, and, th and that's one of the things that people will spend thousands and thousands of dollars on supplements. You know, you know, I had really low energy, then I took this thyroid supplement. Mm -hmm. I had, had really, you know, it, something, you know, skin rash, and I knew it was, you know, I needed more antioxidants. Well, wh where's the defect in the natural system? Mm -hmm. Have you always been this way? Right. When did right. it first develop? You know, right. and you, you'll see a lot of allergies and and diseases. No, no, no. I was always able to eat this, and then I developed this allergy. I was, I had tons of energy when I was a kid, and then I developed this. And Right. You know, it, it just takes a little bit more detective work mm -hmm. to find out where the deviation from normal started and what caused it. So theoretically, people should not be, you and I were just talking about this the other day, it's just bizarre that people have to be on any medication at any point in their life. If they're 80, 90 years old, I mean, it's, it's very strange, isn't it, that we develop this reliance upon any kind of medication? It, it isn't is. It? it is. If you've had, I mean, medication for an acute injury, absolutely vital when, yeah. I, when i had my legs busted man i was first in line for morphine yeah yeah mm -hmm. i totally recommend it if you've ever run over by a car <laughs> morphine's the way to morphine's go morphine's the way to <laughs> go morphine smoothie I'm, I'm, absolutely a morphine smoothie i've never thought of that <laughs> that would be a good uh, money-making venture the way to get it in <laughs> it, 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 but but for long term you're in big trouble mm -hmm. and and every drug that they give you you, you figure they used to call it patent medicine they only do one of two things they're either going to block a receptor site in a cell or poison an enzyme mm -hmm. and long term the drugs that they give you cause what they're designed to right. correct so every muscle relaxant causes a muscle spasm every antidepressant causes suicide and suicidal thoughts mm. right so it's now like, why why is that um it's just the nature of do all drugs have the the oh, opposite yeah. be the a side effect i guess oh absolutely if you look at at opiates or any pain reliever uh, mm -hmm. Long-term opiate use, it increases pain. It increases pain sensitivity. <laughs> it, wow. it, it's it's mind-boggling, because I'll get people that have been, t <laughs> this one guy, she had horrible scoliosis, okay, and she's 50 years old. Oh, gosh. She was taking six um, uh, opiates. Okay, and, and we're talking oxy, oxytocin or oxycontin. oxycontin. Yeah, I mean, just, just like major, major powerful stuff. Norco, um, this morphine all, sulfate. Everything. And this was to deal with the scoliosis pain or what was? Uh, well, to deal with her pain because okay. there's there's gonna be physical pain of her not doing it, then there's emotional pain because she's frustrated she can't do it. Okay. Hmm. And she's going to a pain management clinic. 
I, I'm sorry, do you know how to say legal drug dealer? <laughs> okay, so she's going to a doctor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you mean going, a medical doctor? Go, going to a pain management <laughs> clinic, which just, you know, to get her drug supply. Right. Well, over here, you know, I, I said, look, one of the reasons that you're in so much pain is because you're doing so many opiates. And so she started to do less and less and less opiates, and she started to feel better and better. And she came into me yesterday because she's completely drug free now. Wow. And her pain management clinic says, we've never seen this before. Hmm. We've never seen anyone taking pain medications and get off of them. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. I bet you love those stories because you probably hear it all the time. People are like yeah, befuddled. They, they befuddled. It, it's kind of it's kind of the opposite. I, I I get frustrated that that there's so many people out there that mm. don't get it. Uh. That that and because I get you know, we probably get about a hundred new patients a month. So it's about twenty five a week. And I hear the same story every time. Wow! wow. And and so it, it's it's like you know you're you're not looking at the source of the symptoms, mm -hmm. and this goes with everything. The body's natural state is health. Right. You can't give a chemical to alter the physiology and, ex, it, it, and think you're going to get health. Right. Right. And then you get health health food people in here who are taking you know ashwagandha and and you know this supplement for that and this which is great. I mean they're superfoods, but they're still not looking at the natural state of the health of the body. You know where is it? Right. Oh, I have a thyroid issue. No, do you really? Organs don't do that. Oh, I have an adrenal fatigue problem. Do you really? Could there be a chronic inflammatory response? You know, you know, it's it takes a little bit more detective work to find out. So is that an issue with people? Because really, when you try to get to the root of these things, it it, it requires uh, an intense sort of mental and spiritual perspective to change. And people most <laughs> of the time aren't willing to do the change and trying to look at what's really going on. It seems like it would be really challenging for people. Oh, you are you know? so right on. Yeah. Honest, yeah. honest to goodness. It, it is a that a lot of work in every book I've written. Okay. Whether fibromyalgia, blood pressure, arthritis, whatever you have to um, change your perception uh -huh. of, of what your body's potential is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and once you do that, the, once the mind understands that the body is, is healthy in its natural state, mm -hmm. then you start to look, instead of treating disease, you start to look at, at regenerating your body, regenerating health. I, I mean, that's it. it every, all healing begins in the mind. Yeah, it starts in the mind, right? Right. And yeah. the, that's why, I mean, when we're given our, it's called a report of findings after okay. the physical exam and all the tests, I show people what the actual source of their problem is mm -hmm. and show them what damage is done and what the potential for correction is. And you get some people in there, their mind is, is gone. Hmm. I had this one patient yesterday, came back after six years because he fell off a ladder. And luckily I had x-rays six years ago and I just took a set oh, now. Wow. And I'm showing, you know, his, his spine's just being destroyed. His nervous system's being destroyed. Six years ago he wasn't taking blood pressure, cholesterol drugs, now he is. Hmm. Oh, wow. and, and, and he says, no, I just want my shoulder fixed. Hmm. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I, 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 well, like where do you start? I, I, yeah, because mm. his mind is is that I'm you know a, a shoulder doctor and not just it, purely mechanical or something, right? Yeah. yeah. Even right. The, even though so far 100 percent of the people on blood pressure drugs got to reduce or eliminate them within a week. Mm. A uh, week. A week. A week. A week. You know, I mean, it's it's like uh, Gabriel Cousins with the. Type two diabetes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you're looking five to seven days to have your blood sugar normalize. Right, and we do that in our practice. Just say, hey, look, go to a plant based diet. Don't eat any animal products. And I think a big thing to be aware of too is looking at your life and trying to figure out where um, you're being exposed to toxins big or where time. you're being exposed to environmental hazards that are causing issues. Because, like you're saying before. Uh, certain people will say, oh, you know, my thyroid was fine when I was 10, when I was 20, when I was 30. Then all of a sudden I'm 45 and I've got thyroid issues, yes. but they don't look at their environmental. I mean, that's why we bought this. Um, I don't know if you can see this on camera, but this um, tri-field e meter. Tri meter where you can measure the e uh, EMF in this room. Oh, cool. Yeah. And it's. Um, <laughs> you don't want to know what you're sitting in right now. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty. <laughs> to be honest. So we're doing our best to get grounded uh, pads mm -hmm. and different things to, you know, we have the grounded sheets, you know, and these types of things, but it's, it's important to look, I think at your, at your life and, and, 
figure out where the weak link is, right? And figuring out what's going wrong because if your diet's the same your whole life, whether you're eating organic food or this typical American diet, um, if you're being, if something's happening to your physiology, it's you got to look at what's what. You know, we we're just driving the other day, and when you drive with this thing, the the, the thing Off is spiking the, chart. the whole time we're driving. And I'm thinking about truck drivers, the electric and hazards. You know, the the mindset that you just said <clears throat> is is completely different than the medical model. Mm-hmm. See, in the medical world, if if you're 10 and you got a normal thyroid and 40, you have an abnormal one. That's correct for the medical world Uh because they think that systems wear out they think that that's where disease comes from just Mm -hmm. getting older just getting older and And how many people buy into that everybody Mm -hmm. everybody everybody and and you know you could approach them with logic well you know my 80 year old grandmother has a perfectly functioning thyroid why did hers work and yeah why did hers my my great grandma died at 90 you know Mm yeah and and she had no drugs whatsoever heck john adams the president one of the presidents died in his 90s i I know i know he was a wacko he ate (laughs) nothing but organic crazy nothing but whole foods is that that true with uh, i didn't know that oh yeah yeah yeah. you figure lifespan when you look at it and you factor out infant mortality it really hasn't changed in about two thousand years Wow. wow, and and you know because that's one of the things that they tell you to buy into the system. We're living longer. That's why you need these drugs because yeah. your systems are wearing out. And then you can't go in and say, well, what about all the eighty, ninety, mm-hmm. year, you know, year old people that never had all these diseases? No medication, no, no thyroid, no T four medication or T three <laughs> medication. <laughs> you know, none of that stuff. Yeah, it, the body doesn't wear out. What you just said is so. Um, pertinent to today's world that the body systems don't wear out the body's constantly regenerating uh-huh. and I've had this discussion with with doctors I had this one orthopedic surgeon who'd compressed disc in his neck no the disc can regenerate and it fl- flipped him out he said discs regenerate but here's a guy that prescribes non anti-inflammatory drugs like Advil, Motrin, Aleve and all of those drugs they limit the growth of cartilage and right. discs and ligaments wow it's and so you're not going to see it if you're prescribing that yeah that makes sense here can i ask a really practical question yeah. this is great and louise in the chat room she said i would really like to know if dr b has any recommendations on what to ask a chiropractor when interviewing them as a possible new patient she said she's between chiropractors and she's feeling overwhelmed oh boy do oh. i do i ever we got a <laughs> because video. she's in texas we, yeah. she's not around the corner from you but yeah, yeah so tell us about that okay it's a it's good question a list of seven questions okay okay we got a video on it great oh so how do they link to that mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's a YouTube, how to find a corrective chiropractor. Great. Okay, we'll and, search for that. We'll find it and put it in the show notes. Yep. Yeah, and the and the, the questions are really basic. Um, there's a really good chiropractor in Amarillo, uh, Dr. Shane Hand. He's a good one. Shane Hand? Shane Hand. Oh. I know, Hand, like okay. H-A-N-D. Great. Okay. okay. Yeah, he's, he's a brilliant guy. But Amarillo, Texas is a big state. Yeah, that's right. Awesome. And the questions are very basic, like uh, do you take x-rays? Do you utilize the x-rays? Because some people just take them because they can bill. Um, do you take post x-rays to document structural changes? Do you work on post-surgery cases? Uh, can you reverse arthritis? Okay, and uh, do you work on infants and elderly? Mm. Okay, so okay. It, a lot of people don't understand that you can reverse arthritis, and a lot of people don't take the objective analysis to take a post x-ray because they're not, they're not showing structural mm-hmm. changes and you have to you change the 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 shape and the structure of the spine you're changing brain function you're changing proprioceptive firings so you're talking arthritis of any kind of any uh, osteo or, or, or rheumatoid, or rheumatoid, rheumatoid. Or anything all of those rheumatoid arthritis is going to be more of um an, a, an immune system problem but the nervous system controls the immune system mm-hmm. what's psychotic is in rheumatoid arthritis they give immune suppressant drugs instead of understanding that the immune system is working correctly given the environmental stimulus. So you, the, and, and the body gets its environmental awareness through the nervous system. So mm. to correct rheumatoid arthritis, you gotta check the nervous system first. That's one of the first things. Yeah, but you know what I was just thinking? When, when you talked about how your mindset has to change first, mm-hmm. 
uh, your mind and your emotions are chemicals secreted by how your brain's wired. Uh -huh. And so every time you have an emotional experience, that's a certain chemical cascade that your brain influences your cells. So this is, you know, when you hear people, oh, happy people don't get as many diseases right. and grumpy people get more. No, that means that their brain is aware of their environment and doing a certain chemical process, which is the emotional cascade creates chemicals and then their cells respond in kind. Hmm. Interesting. So if you think about, you know, I always use the baked bread analogy because when you say baked bread, you know, typically you feel a grandma and everything and you know, you know what, what type of emotional aspect, what type of chemicals are your body working with? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you loved your grandma and you love that smell, mm. you know, your adrenals are gonna start to calm down, your thyroid's gonna start to kick up to normal function. Mm. If you were hit by a bakery truck, you smell baked bread, you might think, oh my God, that Helms bakery truck is after me. Not so, not so good. <laughs> but but this, the same environmental stimulus, but a different way your brain's wired, right. so you get a different emotional cascade, and that triggers the cells. So it's the emotions then that really determine the way the cells react. And the emotions are based on how your brain's wired and your perception of the environment. Okay. So all disease, thyroid, adrenals, everything, Got to look at the emotional aspect of it, the chemical cascade, the physiologic aspect, the neurologic aspect of it, and realize that those organs are functioning correctly given the environmental stimulus. Okay. And in, in, in the, there's not a problem. No one has a bad thyroid. Hmm. No one has a bad adrenal gland. Okay, they're, they're, the adrenal glands are fatigued because of too much stress or inflammation. The thyroid stress because it doesn't have enough nutrients um, to, to build it or there's alternate um, communication from the sensors in the body that tells the thyroid to work correctly. Okay, so, the, so the thyroid and the adrenal, whether or not your test says they're low or they're hyper or hypo, um, they're operating correctly given the environment. Absolutely. So what we need to do is change the environment, change the mindset, um, and change the diet, and change exposure to toxicity, and start with a holistic approach for the whole, a whole life change, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Find find the source of the problem. Yeah, if if <clears throat> your your body had something that was um, functioning correctly at one time, ninety seven percent of all diseases are correctable. So yeah. that means only 3%, like like Down syndrome or, or something, and even Down syndrome, you can help a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're, they're genetic that, mm -hmm. that are in there. Mutations. And the rest genetic. of the diseases are genetic expression or environmental adaptation. Right. Yeah, oh, this is cool stuff, because if you really get that, man, diseases are reversible. Yeah. Well, it's amazing, yeah. because you think about people with healthy, functioning adrenal glands and thyroids, I mean, they have um, you know, normal levels of testosterone. They're able to, you know, move in the direction of their dreams. They're motivated. They're inspired. They have high sex drive. Um, all these things are associated with having healthy adrenals and thyroids, right? Absolutely. So it's it's like it affects everything that we do, even our uh, motivation, right, and determination, and things we want to do and goals we want to achieve in life, right? Yeah. Everything. That's yeah. that's why when it, when I did my talk on goal setting, mm -hmm. it's not something cool that you write on paper and you achieve some oh, and then you don't achieve some. Uh huh. Okay, it's it's a mindset and that mindset is, so like if, if you have um, a, a, a vision board or you have an idea that someday you're gonna accomplish something, mm -hmm. you know, you're gonna go to Italy or, or travel or cook or take care of somebody, you know, that's your vision. And you think of it as a possibility, you're gonna have a certain emotional response to that, which mm -hmm. generally is gonna be positive because you're looking forward to doing mm -hmm. it. Right. And then that's gonna have an emotional cascade or a chemical assault on your body that could be phenomenally beneficial. So goal setting and doing a vision board, and there's an exercise of, have, have you seen the exercise of doing 100 things to be, do, be, or become? No. no. Oh, this is so much fun. What I is love that? this. Okay, it breaks the limits on your mind. And this is perfect for like anyone with We five. have limits on our mind? <laughs> you heard it here. Who limits on our mind? Where did that come from? It, it, parents usually, they're the ones media. that start it. TV. Yeah, media. Right. It, and, and this is anyone with any chronic disease, 
you take a sheet of paper and write down a hundred things to do, be, or become. Okay. You don't have to think of oh, why, and and it's hard. Wow, because hundreds a lot. Hundreds a lot. It so is. you're going to write down, learn Cantonese. You're going li- to learn ancient Greek. You know, okay. hike the Great Wall of China backwards. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, you're you're going to come up with with stuff that just to fill out the hundred. Just to, yeah, just to make a hundred. Right. And, and, but it it also is tapping into areas of your mind, and there's like like a universal intelligence that we don't generally access. Okay. And then you're going to go back of the list, and you put a one, a five, or a ten next to each one. One, a five, what, or a ten. One, a five. You're going to accomplish that. You could accomplish that in one year. You could accomplish this in five years. I see. You could accomplish this in ten years. Then you go back the list again. You pick the top five of each one, and so now. In your mind, the your top four, five number ones, the top mean. five number ones, the top okay. five number fives, and the top five number tens. Okay. So you got these these five. That's really cool. Goals that, that you're cool. going to accomplish in ten years. These five goals you're going to accomplish in five years, and these five you're going to knock out next year. Interesting. Okay, and then you go and build a vision board. So you're looking at it. You know, you want to have a Rolls Royce. That's going to take you five years. So you have a picture of Rolls Royce. That's what you're looking at. Okay, you want to um, go to the South Pole. Okay, that's going to take you, you know, five or ten years. Mm-hmm. Okay, you want to sail around the world. That's a ten-year goal okay. or five-year goal if you're me. Or a one-year one goal. Or one year. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, you won't be in our studio for a while. I think you have somewhere to be. <laughs> so it, but, but then it implants that reality in your brain. Right. And so every time you look at that, what type of chemical assault is your body going to be under? It's like, it's like oh, my God. Mm. Joy, excitement, love, gratitude. I, I mean, in, in possibility. this Possibility. Yeah, possibility. you're going somewhere. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, and that's where healing starts to occur. And, and that's, that's it, it, when we're doing a physical mm. exam, I actually, it, it, this is kind of cool. On the patient entrance form, the first thing you fill out, mm-hmm. right beyond them filling out their symptoms, like every other doctor has, right. you know, back pain, neck pain, whatever the pain, okay. Right. I put underneath that, do you want to get better? Mm. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting when you when we filled that out. Yeah, some people, it seems, we forgot about that, you're right. Some people put no. Really? How many people put no? Yeah, what percentage? A really Small? low percent? Five percent. But still people do that. There's people do that. What? Or they'll leave it blank. Probably what? about 20% leave it blank because it's not in their psyche because they've been to 10 different doctors. They, they, they've they been had their hopes up and dashed and they don't want to do it again. And their, their parent made them or their wife made them or their husband made them come. Wow. You know, it's just one more doctor. Ugh. No, say no, I don't. Holy moly. Better. That's yeah. bizarre. Yeah. And then I ask them. I put them on the spot. I said, "Do you want to get better?" Well, you know. Then they, then they'll tell me. The story mm-hmm. comes. Yeah, the story comes out, and I'll say, "Well, okay. W- what do you do for activity? Oh, I don't do anything. Everything hurts." Okay. Well, when I get you better, hmm. what do you want to do? And you see them perk up, and it's like, yeah. God, I'd love to play with my kids. Yeah. You know, and it's like basic stuff. I'd love to be able to cook lasagna. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Had this Easy, one, this one eighty year old, the eighty year old Italian gal. She wanted to cook lasagna, and and it was it was like okay okay good we you can wanna, do that when you get better that. when <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's true cool. it's that like languaging an, uh, yeah that languaging is like an embedded command it, mm-hmm. it is and and that is going to change the brain change the chemical assault it's going to make my work a lot easier yeah wow so I know you have um, some talks you've done on your YouTube channel right on thyroid if people want more information oh buddy I've got six. you've done a lot. Six talks on thyroid and stress, thyroid and inflammation, thyroid and chronic disease. Okay, so yep. those are all available on your YouTube channel? Yep. Are they in, I wonder if they're on a playlist or maybe we'll link to, in fact, what I think what we'll do is we'll link to all those six talks, we'll find oh, them cool. all. cool. Um, can you um, find them just by typing in thyroid or something like yeah. that into your? Yeah, if you type in Bergman and virtually any condition, our YouTubes are gonna come up. You've probably done a talk on that, yeah. okay. Wow, yeah. we got about another four months before we have a totally cool website that's easy to navigate. Oh, really? Nice. Oh, by the oh, way, yeah. I didn't I didn't mention this, but I mentioned it when Dr. Dewitt was in. Um, awesome job you did on that webinar, uh, your first webinar for oh, yeah. for Owner's Guide. Oh, cool! That was I'm, awesome. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, I was asking some of the questions. I don't, I don't know if you knew, but. Uh, I asked a couple of questions, but it was really cool. Those are available, right, for people if they want to get on Owner's Guide. Uh, yep, yep, okay. absolutely. And Owner's Guide is free to everybody for seven days. Oh, and, oh, and we're that's even going to gonna do a webinar from the cruise that's coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, Dewitt was saying that. It, yeah, it's going to be fun. So, when um, will that be your second webinar? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to do a webinar a month at okay. least, 
and then we're doing a whole number of, of different um, you know, video things. We're gonna do how to communicate to a doctor, a, a medical doctor. Okay. You know, when they say you have this or this or this, mm. or you need this or this or this, you know, how do you respond? Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. I, I think that's know. huge to get out there because I mean, who, well, I'm not yeah. in that position much anymore, but I used to be, and you just feel so powerless. You feel yeah. so powerless. Yeah. Well, you're not vaccinating your child, you're a bad parent. Right. You know, right. and, and how Judged do you respond end. to that? Right. Yeah. Okay, and then you say, well, look, here's the physician's responsibility for him. Let's talk intelligently mm -hmm. about this. What's my child's risk of this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Will you sign and be responsible for your medical procedure? Right. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna do a whole video on this. Oh, in this side. is great. A bunch of them. Nice. Yeah, in our free time. In your free time. <laughs> 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 Can I say I'm just still laughing because my grandpa was actually hit by an ice cream truck. Do you remember that? Oh, no. you, really? you said bread truck, and I'm like, <laughs> I remember my dad's response. He was getting out of the wrong side in England. They had just landed, and he just walked out, forgetting cars come the other way. Oh, and that's right. He gets nailed by an ice cream truck, and my dad's like, "Were you flagging it down?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's 93. He's still here, he's but still alive, I mean, he great. was in the hospital for a long time. He doesn't want any ice cream anymore. No, but he still eats ice cream. I I was gonna say, hey, the baked bread, you might still have a warm feeling about that. That's funny. How old was grandpa, he when he got hit? It was a, he, was in his, he was in his probably early 80s. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Just nailed, just flattened by the ice cream. Her I mean, grandpa it was bad. is so, is so he's, robust. Like he's, he's so robust. Just, he doesn't do anything with health at all, but he's 90, what is he? 93. 93. Yeah, yeah it's pretty amazing. Strong genes. Oh, yeah. if, you, if you look at the blue zones, the, the different areas around the world where everyone's living over, well, most everyone's living over 100. Uh -huh. Wow. At, they don't work out at the gym. <laughs> Yeah, don't, they yeah. walk every day. Some groups drink wine every day. Some people are total vegans. You know, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. it's just normal. I was just looking at online the other day of uh, someone wrote into our, our thing about how chocolate's toxic and uh, it's horrible for you and all this stuff. And so um, I was rem reminded of this lady who uh, she was 122 years old, lived in France, and she she ate 2.2 uh, <laughs> pounds of chocolate a week. <laughs> and drank like port red wine every day. You know, it's amazing. She was so happy, loving her life. Yeah. Just loving her amazing. life. Amazing. 122 years old. 122. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. The, People the can do that. Guys in Sicily, uh, they have the what they eat in a month, seven liters of red wine. Whoa. And they, they, that's the oldest living males in, in the world. How seven. many gal how many gallons does that I I think almost two, but I I Seven gallons. liters I'm gonna per person per month they would do? Per person, yeah, and I'm thinking wow. one glass is like a lot and I can't drink during the week, so I you know. know yeah. <laughs> I know, I can barely do one. I do one and I'm, I just, I can't handle it. Yeah. yeah wow, one gallon equals, one US liquid gallon equals 3.7 liters. Okay, yeah. Yeah. It's, wow. It's, That's two gallons. Hey. But then you got, you know, the other people, the rest of the world that don't drink. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, it's right. not a it's, prerequisite. Don't, yeah. don't. <laughs> right. Like, I'm drinking them <laughs> yeah. forever. <laughs> yeah. You heard it here, Dr. Bergman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People like to use the he best also shining example of, of they, people, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of the yeah. worst diets and, <laughs> and things. But uh, that's funny. Wow. So, uh, Owner's Guide is a great place to get access to those videos that you're talking yep. about, as well as uh, your main website, Bergman Family Chiropractic. Yep. Uh, and what else do you have? You have a our, lot of our, our YouTube channel is John B. Cairo. Okay. And um, uh, well, we, we've got the other websites that we're building. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And what about the arthritis reversal system? You have oh, that as well? Oh, the arthritis reversal system is okay. up and running. And we're, the next one is going to be high blood pressure reversal systems. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a fun one. Oh, that'll be great. Nice. There's a lot of conditions out there to correct, isn't there? Yeah, <laughs> and it's all, it's health is a natural state. Yeah. We're, we're, just, we're just presenting these things to break people's delusionary concepts that their body's sick. Right, right. It's just responding correctly and you change that environmental stimulus, man, disease goes away. Have you thought about doing a, um, a mindset sort of, um, not, not like a reversal system website, but like a mindset almost like a prerequisite for people that come into you or that just want to overcome diseases and just having 
some sort of systematic approach to retraining their brain. Yep. Sort of like the uh, Bruce Lipton stuff. And that'd be great if you if you did something like that too for people to have that as like a foundation. Mm. Yeah, we're, we with. actually have, um, it's called a breakthrough process. It was developed by Dr. Martini. Oh, okay. And we're gonna be incorporating that when we move our office. Oh, cool. Oh, nice. Cool. Because- That's it, a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's fun because it can be done very very quickly. We're yeah. talking one to two hours. You can break down certain barriers that have been limiting health. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, awesome stuff. Thank wow. you for being on today. Oh man, thank you so much for yes. inviting me. This has been a blast. Oh man, it's love been so having much fun. you. You, you guys your, are fun. And your beautiful <laughs> wife over there. Oh, she's a sweet. Congratulations wife. to you yeah. guys. <laughs> Woohoo! Love it. Love it. All right, everybody. So if you want to grab the show notes, thank you guys for being on. The show notes are going to be at extremehealthradio.com forward slash 416. And you can uh, go there and uh, make comments about the show or you can comment here on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, is that about it? Anything else to cover? Please share this show with your friends too. If it's, uh, <laughs> If you would be so uh, inclined to do that, that would be very, very helpful to all of us. If you know anybody that has a thyroid or, I'm just watching. Or a wiener dog. (laughs) A a thyroid or an adrenal issue, please share this show with your friends. That would be awesome if you guys could do that. We'd really appreciate that so much. Um, All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us in the chat room. We love you all. And uh, let us know if we can help. Catch you on the next episode. If you are currently using any hair care products that contain dyes or colorings, these things can be carcinogenic. You see, anything we put on our skin, even in the shower, gets into our bloodstream and causes a toxic overload to our organs over time. That's why we only recommend Morocco Method hair care products because they're 100% chemical free, 100% organic, raw, vegan, and even wild crafted and picked according to the lunar cycles. Listen to what our guest Anthony Morocco says about foaming agents in the shampoos. Well, number one with hair care is the sodium laurel sulfate, which is a foaming agent, which is really carcinogenic and it's very, very toxic. So that's number one. And so they're so afraid of it. The industry has made 38 different names for it. They've created kokamide, they've created coconut, they've created palm oil. But anything that foams is sodium laurel sulfate. So I would say that you really need to read your ingredient lists. And if you cannot pronounce the word, it's made in a laboratory. So would even organic hair care products that foam, would those be damaging as well? Yes. Organic really today is not what it used to be. So it's just the word. It really, to me, is not reality. If you want a real product, you want to look at wild craft. As a former hairstylist, I love Anthony's products. If you'd like to have truly healthy and luxurious hair, no matter what your texture, go to extremehealthradio.com forward slash MM for Morocco Method or see it in our store. Again, that's extremehealthradio.com slash MM to learn even more. Would you like to feel more energy and a better sense of well-being? What's flowing through your blood makes all the difference. In my 22 years of nutritional practice, I've found that the food and supplements taken into the body determines to a large degree the amount of energy and happiness people have. One giant step in the direction of more energy and happiness is the type and quantity of protein you consume. Two years ago, I was introduced to a whey protein powder that gave me more energy and a better sense of well-being. Having struggled with low energy, this was a welcome experience. This protein is called One World Whey. It is the first ever undamaged whey protein powder from grass-fed cows. People report the following. Profound improvements in blood sugar and energy, elimination of pain, better bowel movements, detoxification, younger-looking skin and fat loss. Athletes love the strength and endurance-producing effects. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. And in my opinion, this is the best raw grass-fed protein powder on the market. Uh, It's developed on Amish farms. It's got 25 grams of protein in each single scoop. Crazy amount of protein. Increases your glutathione levels. It helps to release heavy metals and toxins, decreases inflammation all throughout the body, especially in the gut. And not only that, but it helps you build muscle and increase energy as well. It has tons of anti-aging properties, so really, really great protein powder. We like to use it every day in our smoothies. And our resident cancer guru, Ty Bollinger, what do you think about One World Way? Over the commercial there, you're talking about One World Way. I want to encourage anybody that's listening, go to their website, go to Justin Kate's website and buy the One World Way. 
Mm. That's something that we include every day in our diet. Every lunch, we have a One World Way smoothie with super greens mixed in with it. It is fantastic. It's the best protein you're going to get. And as they mentioned, it's from grass-fed cows. It's organic. It's cold pressed. I mean, it, it is. You're going to get huge nutritive values from this one world way. It's the best protein on the market, I think. So, then that's that's something that most people are deficient in is uh, quality protein. So, I highly recommend you go there and buy. Go to their website and buy this stuff. It's the best that's on the market. And I'm good friends with Stephen Hewer, who is the uh, the owner of Synergistic Nutrition, and he's a quality guy, and they have excellent customer service as well. Yeah, he's an amazing guy. We interviewed him on episode 88, and he's just an amazing guy, and I really love what he's doing. That's why I love supporting his work and love taking his products as well. Yeah, great stuff. And if you'd like to support Extreme Health Radio and the work that Kate and I do, you can get your hands on this One World Way protein powder that I love so much at extremehealthradio.com forward slash way. That's W-H-E-Y. Or you could check it out in our store as well. That's extremehealthradio.com forward slash way. Great show. It was good, huh? That was, I like all his shows, but yeah. that was very, to me, that was really a practical, um, I mean, it was a practical show, but it was very practical information, I thought. Like, it was great questions that people asked in the chat. That's why the chat can be so fun for mm -hmm. people live. Right. Because it's something I wouldn't ask, but I'm like, you're right. If I didn't have Dr. Bergman, excuse me, like, what kind of things would I be looking for in a chiropractic, mm -hmm. chiropractor? I wouldn't know, you know? I would know that yeah. I want them to be like Dr. Bergman, but right. how do you go about doing that? So the fact that he shared, like, that guy has so many awesome things on his site. Mm -hmm. Everything from how to, yeah, seven questions to ask your uh, chiropractor to goal setting. Like, that was cool. What did you think about what he said about how your, like, you really don't have a low thyroid or a, a bat or low adrenals? Mm -hmm. It seems so contrary to what, I mean, I understand what he's saying about, like, how, you know, your your thyroid and your adrenals are are working properly because they're, you know, it's it's like if you're being beat up in the face and you're being constantly punched, you know, and if you develop a bruise on your face, it's not that your face isn't working properly. It's working properly because there's a bruise there. Right, right. And, but it, it's, it seems so counterintuitive to say that because people's levels are low um, and, and they think that they need to fix their thyroid. But I, I guess it's a, like he was saying on the show, it's a holistic you have to fix everything because you're sort of going through this right now. You're reading that book, The Hormone Cure, uh -huh. right? Yeah, The Hormone Cure is a great book by Dr. Sarah Gottfried. Um, <laughs> it's a ghost in our other room. Yeah. I feel <laughs> like I feel like I'm getting this on all levels, like from Dr. Sarah's. But she's interesting because in that book, she does recommend a lot of blood testing and things like the T3 and T4 and Sarah um, Gottfried does mm -hmm. okay. just more a little bit more MD that way to try to find out. And I don't think there's anything wrong with doing those things. I just think that how you what you do with that information you know mm -hmm. and how you view it is what, what really matters but i'm going through that right now with my nutritional balancing i'm working with you know um nikki, nikki moses from moses nutrition and um she basically works hand in hand with dr lawrence wilson who we had on our show and uh they do the hair mineral analysis testing mm -hmm. which you know i'm sure that isn't <clears throat> completely foolproof either i think everything whether it's saliva hair tissue blood you're gonna you're gonna get a snapshot, and it's yeah. not necessarily going to be a perfect snapshot, and it's also going to be an ever changing snapshot. Right, right. So yeah, like Dr. Bergman was talking at the end. I think that's awesome about how to give people um, some empowerment and how they react to these tests or diagnoses or things mm -hmm. that they're getting thrown at them. Right, is the most important because I've learned with working with even what I know about health, working with Nikki, who's been so helpful to me. I still go, yeah, but my hormones, are they going to balance out because of this? And she's like, the whole body is a whole system. It's mm -hmm. like, if you can balance the whole thing, don't worry about getting your thyroid back in place. It's going to it's gonna go back because if you're treating yeah. the whole body, it, it can't not regulate itself, you know? Yeah, that's kind of what I like about Dr. Bergman. He talks about how, you know, the body and the, and the all the levels in the body, it's like their their normal default state is just health. Right. And so it makes a lot of sense, you know, and I think that um you know, I like that because it's it's as if the body's constantly doing everything it can to regulate all the levels of your, you know, different hormone levels and different blood pH levels is doing everything it can to get to that optimal state. It's just that if we live in such a way like we people do in modern society where it's so uh, oppressive and taxing on your immune system, your body's going to struggle. Right. But it's almost as if like 
That's why I was kind of saying on the show. I mean, I mean, um, you and I were talking about this on the way to the uh, up to Lake Arrowhead. We were talking about how people live in such such um, what toxic environments, and, mm. and their lives are so unnatural that I, I almost think if you just get back to what you're supposed to be doing, that y- you would regulate and and all, all the levels in your body without doing anything really, yeah, any Seems supplementation, like any kind of yeah. Well, I mean, you look at the power of like he was saying how grounding and, and walking barefoot on the <clears> beach can really help you. And it's like, well, yeah, back in the day, I mean, you weren't wearing shoes that that yeah. alone, like you were running through the forest and yeah. you were strong and you 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 knew how to like move move. And, and it just it seemed you were getting what nature needed you to get to be healthy and mm-hmm. have your body regulate itself. And now we're just not getting that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, I was watching. We we're watching that the TV Man, I tell you, it's so weird. The TV. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're watching the TV. <laughs> the TV. It's so bizarre because we're watching TV at uh, in the in, in our the, resort the resort in Lake Arrowhead, and man, we never watch TV, and we just kind of wanted to check in and see what see what was they were trying to program us with. But it was just so. <laughs> <laughs> we were checking in to see what they wanted to reprogram us with. Or program us with. <laughs> But it was just so bizarre because we were watching this, um, this, what, what was it? Like, what was the show called? It was, a, it was about uh, survivors uh, surviving in the wilderness. Yeah. And man, the level of um, strength of the immune system and the level of, of nervous system strength and will and desire and just strength of the people that had to live during those times. Like, it's unbelievable what they yeah. had to do. And well, our yeah. modern life is so cush. You know, I know it's so bizarre, isn't it? it? It's I think what I walked away from that watching those because I think both nights there were survivor shows on which yeah. really cool, actually. Yeah. And there was one I don't remember the name of the show or the guy, but he had been doing this for like 25 years and they throw him out in the middle of the jungle or the Sahara and he like he basically whatever. But he was in the was Zamb- Zambezi. Zambezi. Yeah. In South Africa, South Africa. <clears throat> and he it was awesome to watch him. Like coming to this, you know, he's watching out for like being eaten by tigers and killed by baboons and all this mm-hmm. stuff. That's really a big threat. Right. And he comes across this empty rain, old ranger building. Oh yeah. And to me, I was like, Oh, like watching it. I was like, that's a sense of relief. Like he has this, this building now, but the building didn't have any door, you know, and it's still right. like, what's it going to keep a, a a lion from coming in and killing you. Is this the one you. in Africa or the one in India but with the Bengal a, tiger? Oh, was that that was in India. Okay. I'm sorry, that was the India one. It makes no difference. Yeah, yeah, either way, it's a big threat. <laughs> There's some big 500 pound animal is going to come kill you. It doesn't matter Wrestle what kind of you animal. Or what kind of animal? <laughs> right. Tiger, lion, yeah. bear, oh my. But it, it was really funny. I had this like, this like, oh, comfort. So that to me was comfort. Even though it was this horrible, old stone, disgusting place, but it was like he had a little bit of safety he yeah. found from this onslaught of what could be like a Bengal tiger trying to kill him. Totally. But I thought, isn't that funny? Like that to me felt cush in that situation. It's funny how you mentally can be okay with something because you're so used to something else. Like, right, right. To us, I would just be like being in a prisoner of war camp, That'd you know? Be the worst thing ever. But when you're in that situation and you're like, oh, you're so grateful. It's funny what you become grateful for. So when you look at our situation though, I mean, we're, we are so comfortable and uh-huh. we were up at a resort for two days for a belated anniversary. And it was like, mm-hmm. we had to come home pretty much after two days because we didn't have a kitchen in the place. And so we couldn't eat the way we wanted to eat. And right. we were tired of snacking on, you know, we wanted some real food, some cooked vegetables, some chicken, stuff like that. But I thought, wow, isn't that funny? What we're so, we're so cush. We're so blessed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's I mean, things we hate about this life, but in general, like, wow, we have a whole foods like within 20 minutes. I mean, who can say, who can say, who can that? say that abundance everywhere? Like, you abundance. know, multiple nights that guy was sleeping in trees, right? You know, and it's like, you and know, keeping his eye half open because tying bedrooms. himself to a tree so he wouldn't fall out. I mean, come on. Like, yeah. And it's like, I, I think that I really think it's just it should not be the case that that people have thyroid issues and low hormones. I mean, I it just is not normal. And I think that the part of the reason is for people to I mean, there's obviously multiple layers to this right. emotional, physical, dietary, nutrition, um, exercise. There's all kinds of layers. But I think one of the the first couple layers that I, I think need to be corrected is our mindset and how we look at disease and what's potentially possible with our body. Like he was saying, I want to try that hundred, what is that? hundred oh 
The hundred things to do, be or become. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Yeah, but I think really mindset, cool. and then I think like getting out of the comfortableness of life that's causing us to be like these doughy, um, overweight, pasty, docile, pasty, docile people who are constantly drugged and, and living in just the, the the comforts of modern society. I think that. That's, yeah, we're sure not doing ourselves any favors. No, that's a huge problem, I think, you know. I think it's a big problem. Yeah, I mean, you hear about people, you know, just deciding to, like, say you got, somebody got a diagnosis of stage four cancer, and then they just decided to get out and start walking around the neighborhood, and then slowly, it was like that book in Lissa Rankin, or that story in Lissa Rankin's book, Mind Over Medicine. Oh, yeah. How some guy was basically, some Italian guy or something, said that he was basically terminal Oh yeah, and he decides to move back to his hometown in in Italy, and he just is like, "I'm gonna die, but I'll at least, you know, go out feeling better, and so being close to my people." And then so a year goes by, and he just doesn't die, and so he decides to start doing this and that, and he buys a vineyard, a, a family and, wine business, pretty much. And all of a sudden, it's like what thirty years later, and the guy was kicking still, and it's like, wow, sometimes I really think it is mind over yeah. any kind of medicine or any kind of diagnosis, right? And that just is encouraging to me because sometimes it's it's not what you don't do. It's what you do, what you add back in, right. you know, addition by subtraction by addition. Right, right. Like, I think the more we believe, like, I love that Dr. Bergman um, touched on that subject of just belief and the positivity and, you know, as goal setting and vision boards. I mean, I think that stuff is so much. So important. More important than we even know. And you mm -hmm. and I are pretty all about that stuff, but. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I, I would just love to compile a whole book of people who had those stories of yeah. just believing in something, the power of your mind. How bizarre is it that people will so sign up to his thing and say, I don't want to get better? That was shocking. How bizarre is that? I love their honesty, I have to say, but why would you... Why would you go to a doctor if you don't want to get better? I guess he's right, though. I mean, maybe their husband or wife is, you know, pushing them into it or... Yeah, maybe. They didn't want to be there, but... I did love when you said, when he actually asked them, you, you're saying you don't want to get better. And they're like, well, you know. Yeah. I almost think pe people just, a lot of people like to have an excuse to stay sick. And I think that's what yeah. he's seeing. It's a story that they want to tell themselves. Well, it's like that one woman who was a client of mine for all those years doing hair. And she's had like almost 60 surgeries. I know I've mentioned her before. I think mm -hmm. she's, she just had her 58th or 59th surgery. How was that? And I've talked about it. I mean, unfortunately, she really loves, she's addicted to the, she's the addicted. attention yeah. that she gets from having people take care of her after surgery yeah. and yeah. woe is me and all that. So yeah, she's addicted to it. I feel like that's what goes on with a lot of people that don't want to get well. They, they have a sickness and they want, they're married to the story of <clears throat> hurt and pain and woe is me. And right. even if they can get sympathy from Dr. Bergman, maybe they write that to get him to say, what, what do you mean by that? Mm -hmm. And negative attention, still attention. So yeah, that's maybe true. they just feel heard, you know? Yeah, that's true. So it's bizarre. It is. Um, for those that are interested too, um, there's a way to check your autonomic nervous system with a device that we were turned on to by um, Dr. Richard Massey. And it's called the EM wave. And it's a really cool device. It um, is something that it actually connects up to your iPhone. But I don't think that that would be an ideal way of using something like this because um, if it's connecting to your iPhone, it's probably also giving you EMF signals and things like that. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can get this thing called EM Wave. We'll put it in the show notes and you can um, check your autonomic nervous system. And Dr. Massey is a huge proponent of this of this thing. Um, we're going to be interviewing the, the guy soon, hopefully, um, that's a part of the Heart Math Association. So we'll talk to Who him. Who is that guy? I don't know. There's a couple different people that do interviews there at the Heart, heart Math, um, uh, you know, center. Okay. Um, but they'd be interesting to, to talk to. And also the other thing that, that I want to tell you guys too, is this tri-field meter that we have here. Um, like, look at this thing. This is what I'm talking about. So right now I'm on magnetic range or zero to three. And I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's spiking all the way to the right. Um, just sitting in this office. Do you just, want me to flip it so they can see what it starts from zero? Sure. Watch this. Yeah. Hold it there. Yeah, so. Okay, so there's it's off. Yep. We'll battery test it. So this is what I'm talking about. And so we, uh, we're going to do a video too in the car. When you're driving around in the car, this thing's spiking all over the place too. And so On the electric setting, right? On the electric setting, yeah. And so it's, it's things like this that cause this uh, nervous system to be always on alert and, and your immune system to be 
not working correctly. You Cause know? it stinks. It's not like you don't want to, you don't want to, I mean, weren't, yeah. I'm, who was it that we've heard? Is it Dan and Vitalis or David Wolf say you're not, we're not meant to be flying through the air at 500 miles an hour in an airplane. Like, Oh yeah. Or we're not supposed to be hurtling through uh, a freeway in this little tin box going 80 miles an hour. Right, right. I mean, that isn't natural. And I agree with that. But because we live in the time and space, we do look at all the opportunity we have. Right, right. Now right. it's just about getting smart about how we do it. And, and how we use it. And if you could not be a truck driver your whole life and, and oh. save yourself a lot of EMF problems, then that's awesome. But if you are, then it's good to know how you can at least combat some of that. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of things that aren't natural. I mean, I'm, I'm grateful for them. It's not natural to have a whole food section stocked with your favorite coconut ice cream and, and produce yeah. <laughs> picked for you. I mean, that's not natural either. So yeah, totally, you know, yeah, it's not natural, but still like, but it's you to be aware of, yeah. If you can, um, you know, mitigate a lot of the effects. And I think that's where, uh, you know, one of the first levels needs to happen with thyroid, with any real health condition is, is getting your life, bringing nature back into your, mm -hmm. your home, into your living environment, your work environment and, um, getting more natural. I completely agree. You know? Yeah. It's funny. Everything he was talking about, I, I've seen in my own life. That was a really, really interesting show. I felt like he was talking to me because I've had all that subclinical hypothyroid. Yeah. I mentioned the, th uh, fibro, uh, fibroid, right. adrenal burnout, um, T3, T4 being, I mean, it's just, I have, I'm the perfect picture of what he was talking about. Yeah. And yeah, I've had to view that too as a whole body system, not just like my adrenals or, cause it, I'll tell you, once you, once you really do start to hear, like if somebody says your adrenals are on burnout, first of all, that doesn't sound good. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, I have an organ that burnt out or something. Right. I'm going to die. You actually start <laughs> feeling it more. Yeah. You're like, oh, that's not good. It's like your heart shutting down or something. Right, right. But you start feeling worse and worse and worse. Like just knowing that, but then somebody comes along or you read something that says your adrenals can be totally reversed, you know, fixed. And it's you're almost like, oh, like you take a sigh of relief. Oh, yeah, yeah, it? Like yeah. you just relax, like, oh my gosh, I can reverse anything. Yeah. Wow, what an amazing thing. Now, what if we thought that way with everything, like mm -hmm. he was saying? Like, yeah. I mean, there's very small percentage of genetic problems, mm -hmm. you know, that our people are born with and things. But to a greater degree, we have, it seems like we have a lot more control over the things that kind of get thrown our way or we think just happen. Totally. That's really encouraging to me. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Dr. Good B. show. Dr. B, Dr. B. Right on, Dr. I love that guy. He's cool, huh? He's so great. Yeah. All right, everyone. Um, hope you guys enjoyed that show. If you did, please share it with your friends. We'd really appreciate that. And also, if you want to uh, support the show, you can do that um, by bookmarking our Amazon link. That would be a great thing to do. Uh, if you use the bookmark every time you make an Amazon purchase or click on our link on our website before purchase, probably the bookmark is easier because that way it's you don't have to go through our website, but you can um, bookmark our Amazon link, click on our link, uh, and then bookmark that, and then use the bookmark every time. That'd be a great way to support us, and also we have lots of great projects coming up in the future, so if you wanna support us on Patreon um, on a per podcast basis, it only comes out of your account once a month, and it takes 30 seconds to uh, support us. People do you know, a dollar a month, 10 bucks a month, whatever you feel is, is, um, is worthy of what we're doing. So if you wanna do that, that would be great. Uh, we have lots of great projects coming up, like I said, so um, feel free to do that. Um, and then just pass our show on to your friends. Right on. That'd be great, right? Yeah. Who doesn't need to have an uplifting show like that? Yeah. I mean, all, I hope all of our shows are like that, but I understand some reach more than others yeah. based on the, the subject. But mm -hmm. today was, I don't know, who doesn't want healthy adrenals, lots of energy and balanced hormones. And a high sex drive. And high, I was going to say in the T word. <laughs> the T word. <laughs> the dreaded T word the we're not supposed to talk about. <laughs> just kidding. That was really funny. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next episode. <laughs> that was great. Hey, everybody. This is Josie, Justin's mom. Don't tell him, but I know he would absolutely be really happy if you would sign up to his free weekly newsletter. And don't forget to share this with all your friends. This is the buzzing bumblebee signing off. Hello. Hello. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. <laughs> No material on this blog is intended to suggest that you should not seek professional medical care. Always work with qualified medical professionals, even if you educate yourself in the field of live food, nutrition, and alternative medicine. I'm not a doctor, nor am I offering readers medical advice of any kind. 
None of the information offered here should be interpreted as a diagnosis of any disease, nor an attempt to treat or prevent any disease or condition. While information in this blog is discussed in the context of numerous conditions, it can be dangerous to take action based on any information in this blog or to start any health program without first consulting a health professional. The content found here is for informational purposes only and is in no way intended as medical advice, as a substitute for medical counseling, or as a treatment slash cure for any disease or health condition, and nor should it be continued as such. Always work with a qualified healthcare professional before making any changes to your diet, prescription drug use, lifestyle, or exercise activities. This information is provided as is, and the reader slash viewer assumes all risks from the use, non-use, or misuse of this information.